Happy Bamboo Day. Good morning, Alora. Good morning, Kate. It is a beautiful morning here in Bali and it is Bamboo Day. And Alora, why don't you let us know who you are, what you do, what you're passionate about as we're going to take a walk and talk. I, um, my name is Alora Hardy and I grew up here in Bali. I didn't get to go to the green school because it wasn't built until just over 10 years ago now. Um, but I design and lead, I lead the team that designs and builds all of the, um, the more recent classrooms. But this, being here in this area, in this neighborhood, reminds me of some of the first times that I came to green school was I think, I think it was like the first year it was open and this is where the early classrooms were and it was so inspiring to see. Yeah. Well, we've known each other for a long time, but this right here is, we're in the heart of primary school in Green School. And I think some of these buildings are some of the original buildings on yes. the campus. Is that this right? One, this one I remember really well, that one up there. You think the bunny shed has been in that position for the whole time? <laughs> the bunnies have yes. been here always, yes. So that is a very hot destination here on the campus. So um, here in primary, Laura, I think over the years, like it's been interesting to watch how this neighborhood has grown and changed. And I remember when I first came here 10 years ago, I think with my three children and um, one of them, I think was in primary, actually in this building right here. So that was grade four, I think at that time. But I can see, you know, a second story has been added on over here and gardens have changed, but the topography remains the same and so does this kind of main street here through primary school and that's part of the design idea, isn't it? To create a neighbourhood. Yeah, it's, I think, um, from, the very, from the very early days when, when Dad and Sin chose this site, mm -hmm. I think that they just felt it was beautiful as it was. It was a palm grove, it had some terraces and so they just wanted to nestle, nestle everything into that beautiful space and then create the gardens so that the kids could participate in the earth um, and I think the big thing that always comes up is that they're wallless. Yes. And so I think that the point was just to create spaces that kept an openness, I think, so that, so that the experience could happen of this connection to nature. Yes. And I think that sort of evolved into the whole curriculum yeah. philosophy, right? I think so too. And I think the, the flow between the indoor and the outdoor, you never quite know where you are. You're inside, you're outside, it all sort of merges together, which is beautiful. But here we are, let's, let's have a stop here because um, I remember when these buildings were built. Um, I don't know, how long ago was that now? I think it was when I was having nine, so five years. Five years, five years. So this was, this was grade three. So this is one of the slightly newer buildings on the campus. And maybe you could, could share with us this morning Alora, what some of the kind of design principles are, because no two buildings are exactly the same at Green School, but they do have some common kind of principles that we can see. Well, each of, each of the structures, I think, is designed and formed by the curves of the site. So just right. nestling each building in where it feels like they belong. Right. Um, I think what that leads to is also, you were talking about not really knowing where you are inside or outside, and the, the risk of that is that it feels disorienting but it really doesn't. I think what it ends up doing instead is it makes you feel like, um, you know, connected. So, so if, if you have this sense that the site, the landscape where you are is as, um, is, has a sense of being intact, is like mm -hmm. undisturbed, or at least not recently disturbed because everything's always changing. And then, and then you belong as much sitting on a rock in the garden as you do mm. inside. It just depends how much you need to be protected in that moment. Let's go inside. <laughs> so if you're like, if you're, if you're a kid, sometimes there's this sense of, of restlessness. And people, I think, sometimes wonder if being in a classroom that's open air um, is distracting. Like you're going to keep looking out and seeing. Yeah things that are going on, but I think instead the way that the way that the outside just kind of wraps around you, it makes you feel like there isn't a pull to go there because it's all, you can kind of, you can see what the weather is, you can see, get a little sense of what's going on and oddly I think that can, can become grounding. Yeah, it's really beautiful, you know, when you come here every day you sort of forget actually how beautiful it is and how amazing it is. And this idea that we don't put children in a box to learn, mm -hmm. like literally we don't put them in a box, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, what happens to a child when their education happens in a building that's a work of art? It's mm. a fascinating experiment. But, but even right down to the furniture, which is so beautiful, 
You told me once we call this the bones of bamboo. Yeah, when um, in the early days of green school, they were they were planning all of these things. Like mm. if you're building a bamboo school, like you can't just go buy bamboo furniture so easily, especially 10 years ago. And so everything had to be invented. And so it, it just couldn't be a little square desk suddenly yes. once you'd created the classrooms yes. and the shape and the landscape how it was. Um, and, and these are all spaced for social distancing at the moment, but, but when they're snuggled together, they actually turn into these spiral, uh, these, these waves, or you can arrange them in a circle. Um, and so it's just so important that down to the details, down to the textures and the surfaces, that, that there's a cohesiveness, I think. Yeah. And it comes back to, I think, uh, to us, and it, it, they feel familiar, the, the rounded edges mm. make you feel comfortable and held. Yeah. It's beautiful, actually. I think we see over the course of a year, a space like this will change many, many times. So there'll be different configurations mm -hmm. and even just changing the furniture around from time to time. And the fact that there's no distinctive sort of front and back to these classrooms, it just it, that, that's allows so important. this creativity. In fact, I think if, if there were a set of rules for what a green school classroom needs to be, um, it is so important that no one ever feels like they're at the back of the room yeah. or that they're in the corner. Yeah. There are these actual, I think, story type stereotypes about being in a schoolroom, and I think we can break them through the form of the structure. Mm. So yeah, for the teacher to have a space where they're empowered um, and they can command the attention of the room is so important, but then also to be able to rearrange it together and, and be together in a different layout. and and creating that through the space, I think, can really help hold that space for the teacher. Yeah, and I love student. that. I love that. Okay, let's, let's, let's take a walk back outdoors. The, I think a fun thing that always comes up is how um, people I went to art school, and, mm. and, and, and so much of art happens on a square, on a flat square. Yes. And then you put it up on a wall. Yes. And so these classrooms, I think, have have compelled the students and the teachers to come up with all sorts of different surfaces and shapes yeah. and ways to, to arrange their artworks. That's it's so been really true. beautiful to see. That's so true. There are not a lot of walls to hang things on, so it does, yes, that creativity is necessary at every level. Oh, and I love these, Alora. It's the whiteboards. Yeah, let's see if we can show them in another classroom yeah. from the front. So I'll just tell everyone about mm. them. Um, Instead of buying a big piece of plywood or PVC to be mm -hmm. a whiteboard or a blackboard, um, in the early days, I don't know if it was Dad, John, that came up with this, but he, he said, well, what have we got that's the right kind of surface? Yeah. And in the recycling yard, there's all these minibus windshields. So they literally took the biggest minibus windshields, which have these nice rounded edges, and um, you can paint or put a piece of paper on the back to make it white. There's your whiteboard. Yeah, and there's your whiteboard. I love that. So we're, we're leaving um, primary school neighborhood and we're now coming into middle school. So middle school is that wild, wonderful, wacky kind of age range of sort of 12 to 14, where learning is messy and it's all about understanding ourselves. So um, this is the middle school village right here. So we have some learning spaces here for our grades six, seven and eight children. And I love that each, each building um, on the campus and each neighbourhood have their own set of gardens that they work with right outside their classrooms. Mm -hmm. I um, just, I, I mean, I'm a parent of a, of a um, kindergartner now, mm -hmm. and I just get such joy when he comes home dirty. Yes. <laughs> comes home with like <laughs> dirt under his nails. And there's this thing, um, <laughs> there's this thing, a letter you send out early in the year that says, please send your child to school nicely dressed and like with an extra change of clothes. Yes. And we really don't promise to send them home that way. <laughs> no, we do not. I, I've had three children at Green School, two have graduated, but the laundry is next level. That is for sure. <laughs> it's just like, would they come up with like, what, what did you do I today? I was, I was <laughs> learning about the soil. I was digging <laughs> in the soil. <laughs> and then of course you find out that they're learning the math and the science of the soil, but mm. it's just all being absorbed through that hands-on no, process. we like to get hands-on, we like to keep it real. So here we are, um, we're coming past the chickens here. This was actually a, a project, a grade four project, student project. The to chickens are on vacation, I don't see any. There's some up there. They're snug oh, they're snuggled in that little... They are snuggled that little in coop there. over there. 
So this is a great example of the kind of project-based learning that we love at Green School. So where these students decided to, you know, we've always had some chickens sort of pecking around the place, but really to expand the number of chickens we had and supply eggs to, to the kitchen was ah. the idea with this mm -hmm. project so that we knew the eggs that we were eating here at school came from happy chickens. So, um, you know, it's about like finding a problem and working on mm -hmm. a solution. And that's exactly what they did there with that project. The, um, the... Oh, look at there. Okay. It's amazing. So just everywhere you walk, there's just so many beautiful glimpses. So oh, pretty. so a lot of people probably don't know that's jackfruit. Yeah. Um, and it's a beautiful, sweet fruit, but then you can also chop it up and put it in kind of a curry, like yeah. coconut milk sauce. Yeah, really beautiful. I was, um, I was talking to uh, a friend who's a Balinese guy in his 70s, and mm. he was talking about all of the fruits around us that he remembers eating in his childhood that yeah. no one even bothers collecting anymore. Yes. And I, when I always think about that now when I'm in the forest in Bali or really anywhere that like actually which of the things around us are we neglecting? Named. We get yes. we get into like choosing a few a few special fruits that we like, but there's so mm. many resources. Totally. And actually we love a bit of foraging at Green School too. So learning about what's growing right here on the campus, some of which we've planted and some is just naturally here already you know, and understanding what we can eat, what we can pick, and sort of taking mm -hmm. that to the kitchen and making something of it. It's beautiful. There's banana tree, there's a papaya tree, we've got the jackfruit over there. Yeah, it's beautiful. So now we are coming into the magical wonderland that is Green School early years. So this is where our most tiny, adorable community members spend their day. Mm -hmm. So we've come out of middle and um, primary school and we're now going into to early years, which you are very familiar with. This is my son Nyan's classroom mm -hmm. at the moment. It's all bundled up because they're not in school today, but um, I've always loved this neighborhood. Actually, um, the tower of this structure is a mini version of the tower, the beautiful towers in Heart of School. Oh, it is. Yes. yes. This is, I think, one of the very first, maybe it's the, like the second classroom ever built at Green School. Is that right? And, um, you know, in a way it kind of shows, it shows that the material, uh, the, the bamboo material is so versatile, but there's really a process of learning and listening for it because I think that the long, tall bamboo poles are really underexpressed in this scale of building. Mm. So yeah. for, for later classrooms, we never used these this tower feature because it felt like it couldn't really do what it wanted to do. In heart of school, it yeah, goes three stories and it's tall. Yeah, it really soars in the heart of school. But I can see now, I never noticed, this is a mini version. It's like a scaled down tower. version. But it kind of reminds me of that like that energy of little kids like busting to become, yes. to grow tall and strong. Yes. It just kind of feels Break like it out. wants to be bigger. I love that. <laughs> I'm very attached to this classroom because this, this classroom was my youngest child's first classroom at Green School when we came here. So he's now in grade nine in high school, but he started in kindy right in this classroom. Oh, so many memories. <laughs> that tiny little boy that's now a giant oh teenager. Oh I know, you'll be there soon, don't worry. <laughs> All too quickly. <laughs> so this space here in early years, um, this is our, it's a play-based program for our youngest community members, but also for them, this idea, the ethos, the philosophy of, of educating for sustainability is really strong here. And having the children in this play-based program, but feet in the earth and mm -hmm. hands in the mud, mm -hmm. um, learning how to grow things, learning how to be human with each other, understand, starting to understand themselves and their connection to the planet and really falling in love with the natural world. I think it's really a big part of the idea here. So they spend most of their day here, but they do have outings, you know, out and about um, from time to time, particularly on the, the main Green School campus yeah. when that's open. So heading out and exploring this massive campus um, is an adventure in and of itself. But they have lunch here, they spend most of their day here, they might go to the yoga studio, they might go to the field, and they might jalan jalan, as we call it, so go for a little walk about visit some of the other kids in other neighborhoods or to the library and so on. Nayan remembered coming back from, um, from school and he said, oh, we went to visit the grade twos. Yes. Because the grade twos, <laughs> I guess, are their Jalan Jalan, their, their, their partners. Yeah. Um, so they were friends. They were pairing yeah. them up and taking them yeah. to visit. It was very exciting. I love that. Because they are really nestled here in this, in this neighborhood and I love that. But yes. then they get to have these little outings. It does feel like a little nest here. Let's, let's show our friends that are watching this amazing little tree house building over here. I think it's so adorable. Is 
Isn't that gorgeous? I love how these little spaces, these little structures can just pop up around the place. The thing around here that I haven't noticed um, before, I think they just brought it, Lan was yeah. talking about it, was um, there's a bunk bed in the yard. There's a bunk Did you know that that's a bunk bed? Oh, that because is Green best. Camp Let's is being used for, for classrooms, I yes. guess. They took the bunk beds out and one of them has ended up here. That is such a great a idea. a new playground. It is. Check it out. That is a little bunk bed. That's a bunk but bed. But it's actually Green a bunk camp. bed? <gasps> yeah. Oh Talk about recycling. <laughs> Recycle. Oh, that's gorgeous. And the teachers were saying that That's they, a very cute bunk bed, by yes. the way. But, but they yeah, need some help fun. planning a little roof for it because we want to protect the bamboo from the, from yeah. the elements over time. Okay. But and here's the famous uh, pirate ship. The pirate ship. This is a classic. One of the... Uh, Tell us the story. Well, a parent years and years ago came, um, came over to the workshop, uh, to PT Bamboo Pure workshop, and said he had this vision for a pirate ship and he wanted some help to put it together. So it breaks all the rules of design. It doesn't have a proper roof over it. But, uh, but it's just such a fun, like, playful thing that it, and over the years I think they just they were just replaced that pole there yeah so yeah so if you're willing to take care of it and keep replacing pieces of it you can keep something it's like amazing. this alive for years yeah it's a, a work of art it's so cool truly now I love this space in here and I'll tell you why Laura because if you come down here on a day where there's a bit of a breeze these giant clumps of bamboo sort of creak and it does sound a little bit like you're on some old sort of wooden sailing ship or something it's really something else oh, to go with the pirate ship i get to it to go with That's the pirate cute. ship you know what i mean though when that bamboo uh -huh. moves and you get yep. those creaks we have a clump groans. outside of our office too yeah and every once in a while you have to trim it because it's just like about to come into the building and grow through the roof <laughs> <laughs> it will do that it will do that so I think we're going to have one more stop here in um, the early years neighborhood and we are going to go into, which one are we going which into? We go into? You want to go into this one? one Starlings or but geckos? This one's a whole different kind of space. So this is made of bundled structure, a bundled structure um, and it makes this really snuggly womb-like feeling I think. Yeah, it does um, feel like a nest. Yeah. It's and the floor here is really special, isn't it? Well, this it? one has a bamboo floor and it's perched out over the edge. I love that yeah. for the littlest ones. This is the classroom for three-year-olds, right? Geckos, yeah. they're called? Geckos. Um, and so they just start tumbling around on the softness. By the time they're a little older, you want like a more solid floor that yeah. they can draw on with chalk. But for the little guys, this is just their little snuggly space. Yeah. And, and this, this dark bamboo is unusual. I think this is the only building that we have this dark bamboo on the floor in. Is that right? Yeah, there's not a lot of black bamboo at Green no. School. We've really got this kind of golden, yeah. golden vibe for the whole campus. But yeah. every once in a while, you'll see a little bit of it. It grows naturally like that mm. in the forest. Beautiful. So, of course, we usually always take our shoes off when we go into the classroom. So that's another experience is just your feet on yeah. this flooring, which is really beautiful. Yeah, the texture. The, like, the world is so, the, the man-made world is mm -hmm. so regular, so flat, yes. so perfect. To the point where I think sometimes city kids, when they go off into nature for a period of time, will suddenly find it hard to get their balance. Mm. Um, I just there's it's so important for us to realize that that there's that there's texture in the world, that surfaces vary, <clears throat> and it just it changes your whole I think it changes your whole awareness. And I wonder for a little tiny kid experiencing that right from the yeah. beginning, if that how that shifts the way they think about the world. Well, I think so. And we know that those sort of uneven surfaces, you know, those rugged surfaces, just going with the topography, but even right down to things like uneven stairs, you know, that's very deliberate here at Green School. Yes. We deliberately make the stairs uneven, mm -hmm. which can seem a little counterintuitive. And coming from, you know, when we think about it, sometimes we realise we may have spent years of our lives in almost entirely man-made places and surfaces, from schools to home to offices to shopping malls even a park in a city is usually designed yeah. really to be very 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 regulated and stairs are even and paths are smooth and so on and then you come here it can take a little adjusting although the kids are usually fine it's the grown-ups we worry well, about it's, sometimes it's really it's really to do with it's really to do with fear right, right. And, and we need a certain amount of healthy fear don't we to keep to keep yes. our kids safe to keep to make our world like understandable and legible but I think it's really gone to the extreme where the, the regulations mm. and, the, and the restrictions like 
block something. So somewhere in between is a balance. Yes. Regulations and codes all like come from good intention and good purpose. But when it's fear based and you can really consider each situation, like kids are amazingly agile. Yes. They actually have so much more body awareness, I think, than most of most of us do yeah. after a while. And so how do we not get in the way of that? And how do we keep them safe while we're doing it? Yeah, I love that. I eventually I was I was um I was always aware that it would be really fun to have a bamboo playground, but yeah. I actually was very cautious about it. I made one at home for my son first. Mm -hmm. I made it with my mom when she was visiting yes. a few years ago. Yeah. And I very tentatively invited the, the, the um, head of um, Early Years, Early years Wesley, yes. uh, who also has a kid the same age. And she came over and I was like, well, do you th what do we have to do to make it safer? Like, do you think it's okay? And I was just like, she really embraced it and she really got excited about it. We adjusted a few little things, but, but she, um, she gave me the confidence to, to bring it over here yeah. and to let all the kids play with it. They just we love run this. around it. This was a beautiful gift. Um, yeah, this is very popular too on the campus. It's so so sweet everybody to see gravitates them. to this. I know. It's gorgeous and again, just a work of art. But the, it's really interesting to watch the children go up here. So you've deliberately sort of spaced the bamboo out. Well, but those could be monkey bars over there. Right, right. Right? Either you're carefully navigating it. Yes. And we tried to make it so that if it's, um, if it's like you, you don't want anything that takes you very high, mm. uh, so you kind of keep it all within a low range. Yeah. But then. At some point, someone decided to put a big mat in the middle, and guess what the kids started to do? Oh, yeah. Climbing well, the it there. and yes. jumping down, yeah. which they didn't do before yeah. because they didn't want to fall no. on the ground. But once there was a mat, once you add that to your invitation, buffer, it's actually <laughs> an invitation to do more reckless things. Oh, I love Here's that. Here's the mat that's in a good spot under There's the... There's um, the mat. Yeah, we'll keep that under the swings. Under the swings. <laughs> and this is the little area where they all sit and eat together. This is lunch, yeah. Little lunch Yeah, spot. I love that. Communal lunch. So I think we're heading out now from early years and um, we are going to follow this beautiful, again, very rugged volcanic path, rock path, um, back up towards our amazing Heart of School building and we'll finish up the tour there. So Heart of School is like just a mind-blowing structure. I always think of it um, as sort of the reason why I'm involved in any of this. When I, when I, was, work I was working in New York for years and I was kind of peripherally aware that that my family was like some, building a school or I don't know, something like that. Right. I wasn't fully clear. <laughs> and I came back um, the year that they were constructing Heart of School. And I was like, oh, I get it. I get it. I mean, I didn't really get it, but I began to get it. Yeah. And a lot of people I talk to have that experience when they first walk into the building. Mm. Um, like you just, what did, we talked about this one time mm. in relation to Tulum, I think. Mm. When, you ha when you walk into a building like that, something about it uplifts you and makes you believe that like an, like amazing things are possible. Yes. And so just that stand that Dad and Sin took to make mm. the campus out of a material that like it sounds boring but that's reliable. Yeah. I mean it's it's reliable in the sense that we're not going to run out of it. No. And it grows so fast. It grows yes. in 4 years. You don't have to even replant it within that clump. It keeps it sending up shoots. It just keeps coming. Yes. That's just this unstoppable gift. And if you can figure out, as we have done over the past decade mm. now, how to treat it properly, how to design with it carefully, when you unlock that, you suddenly, so you have kids growing up in a world where they are stressed on some level mm. about this awareness that like, we're not supposed to use certain materials, certain materials yeah. might run out, yeah. plastic is bad. There's, there's tension around it. And so yeah. when you put them in a building that's entirely bamboo yes, and, and it's beautiful yes. and strong around them and just has this amazing sense, but also that grows so quickly and is so efficient, mm. it must just like, must be so reassuring. Relieving, really. Yeah. But it is, you know, one of the things I love about it, and we've talked a lot about this over the years, Laura, is you know, having that beautiful space with that wallessness and the openness and the towers right in the center of the mm -hmm. school, of the community, and is a place that's like, it's kind of like a magnet and it can draw us together. And, you know, we love this idea of wallessness, wallessness, not just being about the buildings, but kind of as a metaphor for the whole concept in some senses. So, you know, blurring the lines around subjects, you know, having parents involved in the school, having children from different neighbourhoods mix and connect. 
It's really blurring the lines around everything. So that idea of wallnessness and that building really represents that as a, a place, a central place on the campus that community comes together mm -hmm. and that also our high schoolers sort of graduate from. So it just has so much meaning. But tell me an example of wallnessness in the, in the way that, you, the, that we learn here. Yeah, well, the idea of you know, keeping learning real and applying it to the real world really means that you know, the real world doesn't operate by subject matter. Um, things so when you integrated. have your hands in the dirt and you're planting. Yeah. So if you're planting rice, for example, there's maths in there, there can be science in there, there's culture and language can be in there. Um, there can be geography in there. We can look at where rice is planted around mm -hmm. the world. So you can create these beautiful integrated yep. units, um, whether it's a project or a lesson, but taking a theme or a problem that we want to solve and bringing in different subject matter, which is part of the, the actual, dis, you know, despite the rugged, rugged campus and the volcanic paths, you know, the program itself is so sophisticated in its design, in fact. Um, but that's one example. And I think things like having parents involved in different projects in the school and helping out and not being afraid to sort of open the door to that as well is another sort of example mm. of wallnessness that I particularly love. Do you think that the wallnessness would have happened if you were in classroom and just if the school had happened in a space with normal buildings that did have walls? Do you think that, how do you think that has held space for this philosophy to grow? Or if the paths were perfectly smooth, would that have shifted like how the curriculum has formed? No, oh, and I think, um, I mean, definitely, that must be a contributing factor. These little I think, subconscious uh, signals all around us Totally, all the, time. the design of the campus with that heart of school and the main street that leads there, that brings community oh, together. Yeah. We're sort of forced to connect with each other in some ways, and that's where ideas spring up, you know, mm -hmm. through conversations, through connections, and we can get excited about something and do something together. And I think very much the campus design, the idea of neighbourhoods, but these intersection points is really part of it. Yeah, it was And really that is intentional, and that, that I think that that physical design of the space mm -hmm. then comes to life when you bring the philosophy and the ethos into it. It's hard to do one without the other, I think. <laughs> well, I love that we're approaching Heart of School from this side because that's actually, I think, where the campus was originally entered from the east side yes. across the bridge and up the hill, which didn't turn out to be super practical. Mm -hmm. So ultimately they leased land for parking on this side and, and people could drop their kids off mm. on this side. It's just a much smoother process to get to school mm -hmm. in the morning. but. Um, I was so interested talking to you about this, I think it was last year, and we were planning the campus layout for Green School Tulum, and I, and I had always found myself grappling with when you're on campus, mm. there's like certain areas of campus where parents are welcome and community members are welcome, and, and you just are magnetized to go there because you're just going to run into other amazing people and have a conversation that you couldn't have scheduled and get a great coffee and a salad. and. Yeah. And that's, that has been created here, but it, and it's packed into this, this yes. kind of improvised entryway. Yes. We've and learned a lot. <laughs> well, but it, I mean, it really works. It's amazing, but it's kind of packed in there. So, so in talking to you about that, we designed this, like, this, this journey. One thing that you said, which struck me, was you should have a moment of nature when you enter campus. Yes. Because that's what it's all about, and that's what people yes. are looking for. So you want to have a moment of nature the and be immersed bath. in green. A jungle Wasn't bath. It? The jungle bath on the way in. And then <laughs> you need the sense of community. Yes. Um, so that you can connect and have the chance to just spontaneously intersect, I think you said. I love these words. Um, on your way in, and then you end up at heart of school. Yes. I think that idea, the, the spontaneous interconnection, I mean, we talk about, well, you know, building community is something that's talked about a lot, but you know, you have to put some intention to it. You can actually like fast track that and elevate it, I think, when you think about design mm -hmm. and you think about um, not only designing programs where different learners and teachers and parents can connect, but actually physically designing spaces where they're going to bump into each other. Yep. And part of that I is think it's beautiful to watch. Part of that's the curves, don't you think? Like I do. It swirls you around. I do. And the good coffee on campus. <laughs> coffee is very important. <laughs> <laughs> my um, my workshop is nearby, and so I've I've had many a coffee break. I see you across often the, at the, co at the coffee the river, shop, across the yes. bridge, up the hill yes. into the coffee shop. <laughs> oh well, we've arrived here. So why don't you introduce us to this amazing structure, Alora? 
so here we are in Heart of School. Um, for the bamboo-focused people out there, this is Dendrocalamus asper niger. It grows very well here in Bali. It's one of the bigger species of bamboo. It is not, by the way, as strong and as um, long and as consistent as guadua, which is an amazing bamboo in South America. But it is, I think, more elegant. I am biased towards it. I love it. It has this, this wide base and the meat is thicker at the base, and then it tapers beautifully and it curves. And so here is an example of placing and arranging the bamboo kind of just as they would grow in a clump, in a clump in the forest. And that is how the edges of Heart of School roof are supported. As you go toward the center, the main support system for each of the three towers is uh, an arrangement of that same bamboo, but spiraled together. And that is, those are placed in a way that clearly they didn't grow naturally, mm. but they have a natural, um, intentional arrangement that I think uh, reminds us, at mm. least subconsciously, that humans made this space. Mm. Because there's nothing more beautiful than the most beautiful forests in the world. No. Or canyons. And these spaces created by nature. But we, but we can't underestimate um, what it does to the human mind to recognize a space that humans created that still feels tied back to nature and that connects us back into those original spaces. Um, and that's where the magic happens, I think, when you realize this mix of sustainability, mm -hmm. of human design and intention, and of a natural connection. Yeah. That's where it can really spiral together. I want to get you guys a good angle looking up at yeah. the towers. If you glimpse from here, you can see, you can see the South Tower over there. And then as you come through under, um, under the platform here, you can look up and see the central tower of Heart of School. I love they repaint it every year. We added these little steps. You want to go up there, Kate? I'm going to go up here. I'll leave <coughs> it part way off. So this. <laughs> I don't play the harp. Obviously. <laughs> this was um, one of the first things I did when I came to Bali in 2010. I, um, we met this amazing guy who creates musical instruments, and he said that bamboo, being hollow, could make yeah. an incredible instrument. And so he and I um, figured out how to make these steps and this platform, and he arranged harp strings all through the central towers, and the kids Beautiful. go in there and make a, they do indeed. make a little ruckus. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, you forget every day, you know, this is, for me, this is kind of another day at the office, which is crazy when you think about it, isn't it? But when, when you first came here with your kids. Yes. To remember those, like, oh, amazing. the way they interacted with the space. Like, I love that this curves up because it just, just shifts your perspective on, like, the flatness. I mean, people used to think the world was flat. Yes. And in some cases, we're still stuck in that thinking, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah. It's just, the floors are meant to be flat. Wait, why are floors flat? Yes. Well, so you can stay balanced. Yeah. But certain areas, that's very important. And other areas, they just shouldn't be. Yeah. They should curve and respond. And we should learn how to navigate them. So what I love about this building is not only, obviously, the amazing design, how beautiful it is, mind-blowing, really, but it's what goes on here as well. So the ground floor here, this is kind of our version of the, the school cafeteria in many ways. So this is where the community comes together to eat. So these become our lunch tables and we have mats on the ground. So we sit on the ground here and we share lunch together. So ordinarily, that would be uh, grade one. So mm -hmm. around six years old up to our seniors, around 18 years old and staff and teachers as well can come together and share lunch here together, which is a beautiful moment kind of every day. And then on the second and third floors, um, these normally are our high school classrooms. Um, but as a mum of two recently graduated um, uh, high school kids, you know, they're, they're often not actually in there. So they are out and about quite a lot. But these are their sort of home bases here at Green School. So it's sort of like you, you get, if you're in high school at Green School, you, you sort of get the privilege of spending your last few years here at Green School in these amazing spaces in the heart of school. It's Such really a beautiful. beautiful. Thing. Yeah. yeah. So tell us, um, Alora, because I love a few fun facts about bamboo. I don't have many, but I know it's grass 
for example. Yes. But maybe you could tell us how quickly might a pole like this, one of these, grow in good conditions? Tell us a little about the roof. Do you know what it weighs? Somebody told me once it weighs 200 tonne. Well, the roof is could made that be of right? thatch. Thatch. So the real question is, what does it weigh when it's wet? Yes. <laughs> well, I know when it pours here, it can be raining for a good 15 minutes yeah. before the water starts coming off the roof. So it's absorbing it like a giant sponge. Yeah, it, um, it's an amazing tradi this traditional like material. It's very hard to get it good quality now because it's often fertilized to make it grow quicker. Mm. Um, so the, in, in the old days, the thatch would have lasted for 10 or 20 years and now it doesn't quite but it's just this beautiful, um, beautiful texture on the inside. It insulates. But back to the bamboo. Um, yes. The bamboo poles uh, that you see here, mm -hmm. they, they grew out of a clump. So once the clump is established, which takes maybe five or seven years, it sends up a new, gen it, it sends up a new generation of shoots each decade, each year that are full diameter. Right. So depending on the season, you might get 14, 15, 16, 17, maybe even 18 centimeters diameter poles and they come out of the ground full size. So it comes up like right. a train. It's like this right. big like shoot. So yeah. You might have seen bamboo shoots if in, in for food and stuff. It's like, looks like this and it comes up like this and it just shoots straight up. And that process ha can happen in weeks or just a few months to Amazing. go from the ground to its full height. So it's like you can almost see it growing. You can almost see it growing. Yeah. Like, I'm sure some of the kids have come to school and noticed like the little shoot and then oh, the next yes. day and the next day or even marked it. Yes. Or done photos beside it. Yes, I see some bamboo <laughs> up the front yeah. there that's got marker yeah. on it. So there, there are children watching that. But once it grows to full size, you have to be careful because if you harvest it too soon, um, it's not strong yet. It hasn't, it's not dense yet. Right. The, the cellular structure inside, but it only takes three or four years to get there. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? And then it's ready for harvest. And when you put it in place in a structure like this, mm. you have to properly treat it and design the building. But once it's in place, these poles have already outlived what they would have in nature. Beautiful. Because this building is more than 10 years old. Yes, it is. And when a bam they were each four years old when they yep. were harvested, probably. And by the time a bamboo pole is 10 years old or so, it's on its way out. Yeah. It's making room for, for Another. new shoots in the clump. I love it. And then it releases its carbon. So this building has now sequestered the carb, all the carbon of all the bamboo here for, um, for much longer than it would have in the wild. Bamboo, it is the gift that keeps on giving. Alora, I think we're just about out of time here. Um, it's been such a treat to have some time together so this good morning. To catch up. We, do, we do love hanging out. Yes, um, and this was a special one this morning. Talking about some of our favorite community topics. Community and yes. connection through space. Children, education, yes. all our favorite topics. <laughs> um, so thanks so much for giving us some time. It was really nice to have a walk and talk on Thank this you, beautiful Kate. Bali morning. Thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, it was a pleasure to have some time with you and uh, take care on beautiful Bamboo Day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>